I've always been interested in tone-based games ever since I started to play this guy 2 on the PSP for the first time, and after that, I've been hooked on the genre ever since. I've played numerous other tone-based games, as you can probably see on my channel, and I can still say, with every new game I play, I always end up enjoying it pretty highly, you know? And with this video, I actually want to try to explain why I still think tone-based games do really good for the past 20 years, because trust me, it was a thing constantly going on in Proving on since the NES pretty much. And one of the things I actually do love about this genre is that a lot of them do really have unique bosses, again at least from the games I played. A game I really love that does this really well is Digital Devil Saga with its main bosses and the side bosses. For the main bosses, I really did enjoy the numerous encounters with Kamiots and the bosses at the Karma Temple since they ended up having really cool strategies for them. Kamiots at his second stage is able to void his weakness and summon allies, while in his third fight he ends up being slightly more physical with AoE attacks. Then there was the Karma Temple bosses and my favorites being the Jayat Yu fight, I don't know how to pronounce it, but he ends up hitting a weakness and just starts buffing himself because of the extra torrents he has. Stuff like that, it makes me really enjoy it just because the fights end up being really cool and I feel there was a lot of thought put into them. Then there was a lot more other tone based games that do this pretty well and if I talked about like certain cases of them I feel it would take too long but some other games I think actually do this well is stuff like Pokemon Platinum. SMT4 and Persona 5 to name a few. The next part that makes me really enjoy tone based games has to be the systems that to me makes the tones a lot more cooler and have a lot more thought put into them. Systems like the active time battle system, the person system, and the battle order system I really did enjoy just because again there was a lot of thought that can go into a single attack without just being hit them with a normal attack. With the active time battle system I find this one to be the most interactive just because the ball fails out often and there are attacks flying out pretty much all the time so the tension is almost always high since you have to think as fast as possible. Then there was the press system and this one might not be as interactive as the other one but it's still really good in its own right. The basics is that if you hit a critical attack or a weakness you get an extra turn and I really like this one just because it really matters here what you do. Getting your attacks block makes you waste all of your turns and missing only takes away two. Stuff like this would make me consider maybe buffing up my accuracy, buffing up my attack or whatever else and making sure I understand what the weakness is so I don't repeat that. You you can also pass an extra turn to an ally just to get a strong move off to help you control the flow better, which I also like. And the Persona games actually use a similar system, but with this one I feel that you have less risk if you're wondering, at least it feels like that to me. Of course there's a lot more depth to these systems, but again this is just the basic of it and again I still really do like these systems. Then there's the battle order system which famously was used in Final Fantasy X. I actually got introduced to this in the modern Digimon story games but I still think it works great in both these titles. Tone order ends up being determined by how strong the attack is and of course the stronger it is the farther down the line you go. This I also really like just because you get to choose how quickly the battle ends with the minimum amount of attacks because of course again if you attack a lot more often with weak attacks you know the enemy will die a lot slower so you can maybe consider buffing up your attacks and just numerous other stuff as well. And another aspect I really love about tone based games has to be there's a lot of cool ways of gaining new skills and this one might not be a really big thing but it at least makes grinding interesting to me at least. Games like Pokemon have items like TMs, egg moves along with actually having normal level up moves. This I find super cool just because you have more to consider with the movesets and for the most part it isn't just getting to a certain level and learning it. I still find it super fun and I think again this is probably one of my favorite ways to get moves just because again you can think about where you can actually to get it from. I also really enjoyed the spear grid just because it always felt constant when you get to move around just because gaining like extra moves is always constant just because you just have to finish a battle with the character hitting the enemy at least once. It's pretty open which I also find really cool just because you can have someone like Aron learn magic and again that's just super fun to me. And then those strategy tone based games and these ones I think are just as fun as normal tone based games. I've noticed with the ones I played the terrain can actually have a different effect depending on what it is. Like I've noticed games like Fire Emblem where if you're into a forest tire you can actually you get more evasion. This actually helps to consider where you move your character and maybe if you move a mage onto there it might help them dodge a few attacks. Of course there's a lot more deeper stuff 
like again a lot of strategy rpgs i've noticed are really heavy on different classes and i think again the games i play in the fire emblem series and the, the sky series are really good on that well you can basically just make the character however you want and then again with the sky i find it to be very unique with a lot of the systems that it has in the game for example it has stuff like geo panels and the effects can vary quite a lot and it could negatively affect the battle if it's on for too long stuff like reverse damage enemy turbo enemy level up and death law are a few of them that could really mess you up though worst one to me is reverse damage since only healing attacks would actually deal damage and for me i usually only have about one healer so obviously i would have to spend a lot of time getting that healer to that spot just to deal damage but obviously i've noticed that it isn't really used in a lot of main story maps so it might not be that bad but again there are worse geo panels out there i feel like the enemy boost ones are the ones that are used quite often at least for memory and those ones can still make maps harder if you don't actually destroy it then there's the classes and each of them do have their own ability which helps make combat a little bit more unique and a bit harder in some cases and then i know later games actually added the evilly system which actually gives the Kyoto a little bit extra stuff like boosting up stats, boosting up resistance, and just some other stuff too. And for the ability, stuff like the ninja class has the ability where if you hit them from the front, it reduces the accuracy. I found this one to be a really nice touch just because it makes me think of how to move around the character just to make sure I can actually hit them. And frankly, I do realize that with Asgaya, the abilities change from game to game from what I've noticed. The one I reference for the ninja is in Asgaya full complete, which I've been playing and I will probably make a video on that sometime later. But again, I do generally feel a lot of the abilities change from game the game so obviously you have to understand what they do and see how you can walk around that the reasons i stated above were why i love tone based games that being again normal tone based or just strategy tone based game the progression the different battle systems and just the huge amount of thought you can actually put into your actions and how they impact the flow of battle is something i look forward to to every single game i play of course, some do it a little bit better, but obviously I think for the most part, there are a ton of tone-based games that just do this really well and ones that I would recommend to this day, like Digital Devil Saga 1, and again, some other ones that I've also mentioned in this video, like The Sky, or at least some of the games in the series I've played, and just, again, numerous other games I absolutely love. But I want to hear some of your guys' reasons for why you guys like tone-based games. Let me know in the comments below, and thank you all for watching.